here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my first look at the Sony A9 Mark III. Now, granted, it is 2025, and this camera has been out for a little over a year, but the good news is it is just as important and relevant as the day it was announced. In fact, maybe even more so because people are relying on it constantly, especially if you're shooting wildlife, sports, anything with fast-moving subjects, or you want to shoot video with absolutely no concern about rolling shutter. That applies to stills as well. So what you're getting here is a 24 megapixel sensor, but the global shutter introduced here allows all 24 megapixels to be read out simultaneously, and that's essentially the short version of how it gets to that 120 frame per second spec. And if you hold down uh, that shutter button, for a second and a half, your total burst is going to come in at 192 frames, and then it's going to have to buffer, but that is still just incredible. I mean, when you think about how much data is being captured by this camera and this sensor in that second and a half, it is totally unbelievable. That aside, again, this is really for those of you that are interested, again, in shooting sports, wildlife, fast-moving subjects. Uh, the 24 megapixels will be limiting uh, to anyone who is looking to do high-resolution print work. I'm not saying 24 megapixels is not enough for a lot of different purposes. It is, but if you're like me and you're accustomed to shooting with at least a 60 uh, megapixel sensor somewhere thereabout or a 50 megapixel sensor and you really enjoy being able to crop in on your images, you're not going to get that with this. And that's probably the only thing uh, that I would say it's not a letdown, but it's something you must be aware of. And that's the compromise of having the incredible speed and raw power this camera delivers. You're also getting the same uh, uh, flip-out display that was introduced with the A7R5. Fully articulating, comes off the body, arguably the most flexible and, I would say, best engineered of any display on the market. Solid touchscreen here. Great EVF here that has been upgraded. Same resolution, but now up to 240 frames per second. But the good news is that when you're looking at 120 frames per second, there really isn't any resolution loss. Now, of course, there will be at 240, so the fact that it's really usable now, up to 120 frames per second, is amazing. And we do have a little bit of a redesign on the body. We have a bigger grip, so definitely more ergonomic for those of you with larger hands, and also when you're handling larger glass. I mean, Sony sent the 50 to 150 G Master for me to test with this. I've also got my uh, G Master 1 to 400, my G Series 2 to 600, uh, and my teleconverter, along with a lot of other glass I'm going to throw on this, uh, really to see how it works in just about every situation. We also have this new C5 button here, uh, which uh, you can use to ramp up uh, your drive if you want. So let's say you want to shoot at a more reasonable uh, rate of, let's say, 60 frames per second, which is still totally insane. You can then, you know, hit C5 to jump up to that 120 when you know you need it. And for those of you who are saying, man, I don't need uh, 120 frames per second, once you see what this can do, and I'm sure many of you have, the argument is kind of moot because this is the sort of tool that no matter how good a photographer you could be, this will make you better because you will not miss that shot. It has the pre-focus, uh, pre-capture rather, so that it's for one second already capturing until you actually hit the shutter, then it will save that image. I mean, just so many amazing features, and I haven't even mentioned its ability to sync with flash. And that is one of the big marketing uh tips about the A9 III. I think it's appealing, but I think the vast majority of pros that are going to pick this up, that's going to be secondary or even tertiary to them. But that is another really nice perk, which is that uh, this is capable of essentially, it eliminates the flash sync game. You're never, at least in theory, going to have a problem syncing flash with this body ever. And that's because it can push up to an 80th of a thousandth of a second on sync. I mean, no other camera, to my knowledge, can do that. Um, so that's another really big game-changing feature of this. And then also the last game-changing feature I'm going to mention is its ability to adapt um, to lighting and to eliminate flicker. It's not perfect, but it's the beginning of where we have to go. Um, so again, if you're looking for the fastest continuous autofocus with eye autofocus tracking uh, that is going to essentially create stop motion out of any moving object without losing any detail, again, capped to 24 megapixels and change, this is the ticket, kids. And then on top of that, from a video perspective, beautiful video coming out of this is what I have seen and expect uh, to get while I test this. I have two weeks, but that will be enough time to see if it meets the expectations. It really lives up to what I've seen. There's been a lot of firmware updates uh, since its launch. 
And then a quick look at uh, I.O. It is weather sealed for those of you that are wondering. Um, it is a more modern Sony body. I wish we got a new battery type, but I'm sure the next gen will bring that. I feel like it's time. Uh, so headphone, microphone, combo, not combo jack, but both individual jacks they are separated type c and then we still have a micro uh, usb port sony still keeping that alive here uh, your flash sync hdmi full size port out and your ethernet um, this does have uh, what should be fairly fast wi-fi on board just really a modern camera from sony um, and it's got everything folks so if you're looking for again that speed demon that can do it all and you are not concerned about the loss of resolution headroom there's really no other camera to consider in its class, and even at its price of $6,400, roughly, thereabout, before the tariffs, I think it was around 6000 this still was the camera to beat, and the only camera that will beat it is the A9 IV. And um, yes, of course, you could go with something like the A1, A12, uh, A92, but if you know you need this, well, then you know, and you should just be glad that Sony made it. The rest of us who don't really necessarily need this speed, just be glad that this technology will trickle down. We will get the benefits over time. That's the way all of Sony's tech generally works. So just excited to start using it. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like. Oh, I didn't show you before. Of course, the dual uh, SD slash compact flash express type A card slots. Don't want to miss that, but that's it. Uh, but again, any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.